hey, good morning. So the forecast this morning was looking like super good and I had a good flight last night. Just cruised around here at the airport. So I figured we'd go out and do sort of a little cross country. I just literally picked a destination. It should be about 40 miles round trip. We're basically gonna leave here at the airport. We're gonna fly over a river and a little town and then link up with this lake and kind of parallel this lake. It's a long skinny lake. Somewhere at the tip of the lake, there's a small park next to an airport that I've never really been in that direction before. So I guess we'll go over there, we'll land, we'll check it out. Hopefully the winds don't pick up that much and make our return that bad, but it should be a crosswind on the way home anyway. So yeah, I just put all the fuel in the Scoutmobile, laid out the free ride. I'm gonna bring my Red Bull up with me, I think. Yeah, random dispatch style. Let's see how it goes. Maybe something crazy will happen. Maybe we'll see something we've never seen before, but who knows? unless we go for it. Um, I'm gonna get camera set up and then we will take to the sky. Sunrise cross country adventure. Let's see what you got. wet grass launch. The sun is just popping up. Well, the good news is just above the trees it's already feeling a little bit warmer. I was worried going gloveless was going to be a mistake, but I think it'll be all right. A pack of wild white-tailed deer. Okay, so here's the plan of attack. I'm going to head sort of in this direction. I can't quite see exactly where I need to go yet, but I'm gonna poke and hope. And we're gonna cross the river up ahead, and then we've got a lot of trees to cross, so I'm gonna have to get some more altitude. And then I should start to be able to see our reference lake. But first things first, I think we should crack a mid-flight Red Bull. Good thing I've got one right in my pocket. You haven't Red Bulled until you have mid-flight paramotor Red Bulled. And that's the truth. A little cup holder. All right, we're just passing checkpoint number one, this little river town. After this, it's pretty much unknown territory. Way in the distance, you can see the lake reference point I'm headed for. I might kind of venture south a little bit more uh, so that I have more open fields and less trees to fly over. All right, status update. Just finishing up the old Red Bulls and up here, chilling, taking in the view. It's beautiful over here, and that's the lake I'm headed towards, and it kind of is long and narrow like I mentioned and it goes that way. So this is just the very tip of it. There's a big old antenna over here. Yeah, the winds up here are actually quite a bit stronger than I had thought. At maybe a couple hundred feet here, it's pushing hard out of the south. So I'm just kind of skating along sideways. So yeah, got the reservoir on my right. I'm just kind of still crabbing along sideways. I've got my trim sent to neutral. If you guys saw that video I did about um, gaining efficiency by going faster, I'm going with the slow and steady method right now. Check out those horses down there. This is totally one of those navigation situations where you're kind of low and you kind of know where you're going, but you also can't exactly see where you're going. So I call it the poke and hope. I just know I have to go somewhere over there and my heading is within a couple degrees and by the time I get closer I should be able to figure it out. I might actually see a checkpoint that's going to help me. I know the, uh, the park I'm headed towards is near an airport. 
I think I might see a runway out there. Something's popping out back there. It's very hazy. Finally finished the Red Bull Blue Edition. Go ahead and stow that as we prepare for landing. So the thing I thought was the airport, it is an airport. This is not my airport. There's one right here and one over there. And I think these are little private airports. I saw them on the sectional. They were just false peaks. Our airport is still quite a bit ahead of us. It's a pretty decrepit little airport. Someone parked all their farm equipment off the end of the threshold. There's a pile of stone. I doubt anyone comes in there. That seems a little dangerous. Exciting moments. We're nearing our destination. The suspense is killing me. Yeah, that's totally our destination. And if it's not, I'm going to land there anyway. Now I'm committed. Yep, here we are. This is our destination. It's funny how things look a little different in person than they do on Google Maps. Dang it, they roped off the playground. I wanted to go on the freaking slide. Oh, that's a uh, golf range. I almost said shooting range. Let's come in for a landing right on this here football field because why not? I was never into sports ball as a kid. Ooh, grass is wet over here. What's up, geese friends? All right, we freaking made it. Assessment of our perimeter fuel situation. We've got about eight liters. I took off with around 11. So burned about three liters. It's true. <laughs> Coronavirus. Yeah, three liters in, it was probably up for 45 minutes, um, maybe closer to an hour, but not too shabby. A little bit of crosswind here. I think I'll be able to pull off a crosswind launch down this field. There's not much room because all that is no good. Obstacles everywhere. But I want to aim out that way and just climb out through that little gap. That's the plan at least. Maybe we'll go buzz the airport and then get out of here, fly back home. All right. Got my wings set up and the winds are actually surprisingly steady down here, going directly across the field. And I think we can pull it off no problem, crosswind launch. I just don't feel like moving somewhere else. So I think it's about time we get out of here. It's a pretty sleepy place. They freaking closed the jungle gym and I can't even go down the slide. So what the hell's the point? Let's get up. Well, probably take a look at the airport on the way out and then see how we make it back home. Hopefully the winds are still mild. We've got plenty of gas, so I just hope for a smooth flight. I don't wanna get thrashed around the whole way home. It's blowing steady cross. I hope I don't regret my decision to attempt this. We'll offset slightly to the right as we would do. I'm gonna go just a little half step right. That'll pull up my left side of my wing first to help counteract the crosswind. Yeah, a little bit dodgy. She's doable. Hello, local park goers. Well, that's the airport. A couple dogs down there. I'm thinking I might go a little bit higher altitude on my flight home just to kind of take in the scenery. This haze situation is blowing my mind right now. I'm 
still climbing steady. We're just following this lake. The lake almost points in the right direction towards home, so I'm gonna take it high. Stay trimmed in, just slow and steady. But yeah, it's freaking not very good visibility in all these directions. So I'm just getting to the end of the lake here. And like I mentioned before, the visibility up ahead is horrible. Even though I'm way up here, kind of at a higher altitude, where I should be able to see where I'm going, I can't pick out any landmarks or references out there. And even though I can use the Poke and Hope, and I kind of recognize the terrain I flew over on the way out, I could get there. Um, one way to be more precise about it is using my app, um, or a app, it's not my app, but an app I discovered and I used on the Icarus race, which is called Avair, A-V-A-R-E. And I don't know if it's available on iPhone, but you open up the Avair app, and it gives you a little sectional chart, and it pretends you're a little airplane, even though I'm a paramotor. And I can just long press anywhere on the map, but it recognizes airports. So I can long press on the airport, the actual airport I took off from, and it gives me a straight line to that airport. And then it also derives my approximate ground track. So if I make the two lines overlap, I will get there, and it's as easy as that. So right now I'm headed a little bit too far right, so if I want to get a perfect course all the way home, I just weight shifted a few degrees left, and I'm on track. And my ground speed right now is actually 36 knots. I'm cooking pretty good. It's pretty cool too, like, um, it tells you the distance to your uh, checkpoint that you added. So I've got 10.2. Now there's motion at my front door. Jacqueline's probably headed to work. Um, I've got 10.1 nautical miles to my destination, 35 knots, and it derives, where is it? Um, ETE, ETE, what is ETE? I thought it was ETA. To the checkpoint is 16 and a half minutes. So yeah, that's the lesson of the day. Av air navigation. And what I normally do is like, if I plug in a checkpoint, I'll get my two lines to overlap so I know I'm headed in the right direction. And then I pick a checkpoint like in the distance, really far away. And I mean, today it's hard, so you kind of have to estimate, but I'll pick that checkpoint and I'll just fly to wherever that point in the distance is and that keeps me on track. I'm pretty happy with my ground speed up here at altitude. I was going to trim out, um, even though it's less efficient, most likely. In this situation, I have the fuel to burn, so I can trim out if I want to, but I probably won't. I'll probably just sit here and cruise. Ah, the freaking pond down there is blinding me with its reflection off the sun. So here's my inspiration for the day. If you're a new paramotor pilot, you've never tried cross-country flying, you should go out and try it. Put some time and effort into planning a cross-country flight and then wait for really good weather, go out and execute it. I feel like a lot of people kind of have the idea in their minds that when they get into paramotor flying, they're gonna go do cross-countries, but then I don't think a lot of people actually go out and do it. But it's super rewarding and it's super fun and I feel like it expands your skill set and everything and your understanding of weather and planning and airspace and everything. But start out small. Go for like a five mile 
land at a park. And that's an important part, land there. It, it doesn't really count as much if you just fly there and you turn around and come back. Because at first, like when you're starting out, it's just intimidating to land somewhere else. Because it's like, what if I break a prop? What if I can't launch again? Now you're stuck. You have to call for someone to come help you. But it's super rewarding too when you pull it off. You land somewhere and one second you're in the air, you're flying like a bird, then you're on the ground in a completely new environment. There's just something cool about it. It's weird, but it's fun. Mornings tend to be pretty good for cross countries because a lot of times there's, if the weather's right, it, there's a big window of flyable uh, time. But the thing you have to remember is the conditions are gonna ramp up throughout the day. So the longer your flight goes, the bumpier the end of the flight's gonna be. If you fly in the evening and it's a good evening, typically it gets a lot nicer towards sunset. But the cool thing about mornings is sometimes it's calm uh, early on and then it starts to get windier as time goes on. So if you fly into the wind early on, you have a very light headwind. You can push pretty far and then as the wind speed starts to pick up, you turn around and you come back, now you have a big tailwind. Rant over, that's your inspiration for the day. Um, let me know if you like cross country content because I want to do more of it and I want to go out and do fly camping and pick farther locations and fuel stops and adventure stuff like that. So let me know in the comments if you like that kind of thing. Aside from that, I'm gonna go home and get a shower and uh, get on with my day, edit this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Till then, peace. Zoop.